Today we're going to talk about data analysis within the Irwin Data Intelligence Suite. We're going to follow the role of a typical data analyst, the things that they might look at, including data lineage, data enrichment, and also security and privacy. In the first step, we'll take a look at data lineage in the Metadata Manager, and then we'll talk about how we enrich that metadata once it's harvested and cataloged, and all the ways that we can expand from a security and privacy standpoint from flagging with sensitive data indicators and definitions and creating new categories and yielding some insight in terms of where our sensitive data attributes live. In the Metadata Manager, we have a series of environments that have been cataloged. Under Metadata, if we right-click and hit New System, we're able to easily bring in systems of all different types, database management systems, ERP systems, CRM systems, even JSON and flat files, all into one collected centralized repository where we can then enrich them, learn from them, and share information from them out with our business community. In the center screen, you'll notice that we have a full set of these systems, or on the left-hand margin, if we scroll down, we can easily find the environment that we're looking for. If I go into this Northwest Enterprise Data Warehouse and I start to drill in, I can see there are three separate environments within this system. Within each one of these environments, I should see a series of tables and columns. And as I further drill down into the tables and columns, I can start to learn more and more about each of these tables and the columns within them. Now, in the center screen, you'll notice the data types, lengths, precision, scale, and other flag and markings. These are things that we can learn from as a data analyst to understand how that data is rendered, what is it that's in that data system. My table properties are here. If I want to enrich the properties of this particular table, I can do so. And if I go further down, for example, to uh, customer ID, I can see exactly where that customer ID is tracking to and from under my impact analysis and data lineage. I can enrich all of these uh, fields here, length, precision, scale, even business properties like my data steward, column definition, and comments. For each one of these attributes, if I select my impact analysis view, it will show me my source and target usage of this particular attribute. And I can also understand as a data analyst where my upstream and downstream impacts lie usage in a business rule, source extract SQL, or even lookup conditions. Down below, I'll see all of my source and target usage in terms of specific data mappings that are involved with this particular attribute. Also, my target mappings that accompany this as well. And if I were to select other impacts, that will give me a quick look at all the different usage of this particular attribute. From a data lineage standpoint, clicking on data lineage will bring in the lineage view along with all the transformations for every aspect of this particular customer ID attribute. And if I want to trace that from start to finish, I can simply click on any aspect of this lineage view to isolate and highlight the view that I'm looking for. As an analyst scrolling across the lineage view, this will show me all the places that it's federated out to. And if I hover over a T, I can see how it's transformed along the way, all the way out to what should be my business objects reports and Tableau report dashboards. So end-to-end -end lineage that shows me where a particular attribute came from, where it ended up, and all the ways that it's transformed from start to finish. This data lineage view is derived directly off of the data mappings, which can be imported via spreadsheet, reverse engineered from ETL code, or built from scratch, which may or may not involve a data analyst, but certainly they're the beneficiary of that effort by being able to see clearly all the data lineage that exists for a particular attribute from start to finish and all the ways that it's been transformed. As we continue to talk about data analysis within the data intelligence suite, one of the things that often comes up is security and privacy. In terms of security and privacy, there are a number of features and functions offered by the data intelligence suite that help us not only flag and characterize things as sensitive, but break them into categories and also give us aggregate views of everything cataloged and how it fits into each sensitivity category. Once flagged, a column, for example, will carry that designation everywhere it goes within the system, across the data lineage, out to reports, so that end users can easily understand whether or not the data that they're working with in their reports and extracts are in fact sensitive data attributes. On our screen, we're still in the enterprise data warehouse, 
Within the EDW prod environment, I can see that we have tables that are yet unclassified, and if I wish to classify them, I can simply check the box here in the center screen. Up here on the top right, I can select Update Sensitivity for the selected table, and this will allow me to apply a Sensitive Data Indicator flag. I can also, from that Sensitive Data Indicator classification level, pick the exact classification that I wish, in this case PHI, or Protected Health Information, and further down, I can tell it where to update at the column level, environment, and system level so that I can carry that classification all the way through each level of the hierarchy. At the furthest level down, your metadata options are unclassified or all classified only if I'm making an update to pre-classified terms, or I can also do all classified and unclassified, meaning that all attributes within a table will get the classification of PHI as I'm applying it here. And when I hit update, that will then mark that as PHI, and now I have everything labeled within this environment. Now from there, a data analyst may want to see an aggregate view of all sensitive data within the environment. By clicking on sensitive data at the top of the tree view, they can see a full array of all the sensitive columns and tables that we have within each environment in the entire enterprise data intelligence suite. 1,974 tables, zero sensitive tables, 35,192 total columns, and out of that, 106 sensitive columns. Each of those sensitivity categories is laid out here graphically. You can see confidential, internal only, no classification, PCI, PHI, PII, and restricted. And across the sensitivity classification by system, I can further see for each system which data elements are classified as sensitive and how many. Down below, I can see the actual system name environment name, table name, and column name, along with their sensitive data indicator class and class description. This is going to make it easier for a data analyst to determine where the sensitive data lives, how it's being used across all the different environments, and to ensure that once flagged, their classification will travel across the entire lineage view and be updated in all the reporting systems. This will allow an end user, everyone outside of the data analyst view, to see which data elements are sensitive, if there are sensitive data elements on their reports or within a data extract file that may be leaving the company, further offering security for that data in its classification. In further discussion about the data analysis view of the data intelligence suite, a data analyst has the opportunity to enrich the data within the suite. Once that data has been scanned in from its source, interim, or target system, we'll be able to see all of the tables and columns that exist within that system, and if we want to further enrich, we have the options at the top level, meaning we can enhance the environment details. Extended properties can be added. We can also add associations with things like business process and business terms for this particular environment. There's a mind map that will show any associations. And of course, our lineage and other features here will come as a byproduct of other things we do within the suite. Further down at the table level, if we look at our table properties, we have the opportunity for enrichment here, flagging of sensitive data, adding or changing a system name, number of rows, synonym references, and extended properties and associations as well. And further down at the column level, if we were to look up a particular column, our column properties can be enriched with things like length, precision, and scale, a variety of different flags, the population of a data steward, a column definition or comment, also our logical column name and extended logical name to tie back to our data model. Now, with our extended properties and associations, we're able to connect metadata to everything around it. So for example, if I wanted to connect this to a term, I can connect it to the term customer, and it will show me a graphical representation of that enhancement and that enrichment to the metadata so that I can see exactly how it connects to everything around it. And these relationships will be carried over into our mind map within the business glossary so I can further tell where the contact name is being associated with everything around that, whether it be a business term, a policy, a workflow, any and all associations will be captured here. And this enrichment at the system catalog level will be carried throughout the entire DevOps process into the data governance process visible by everyone, including end users outside of the data intelligence suite using our business user portal.